I'm about to turn 36 and today's video is about why I've decided for myself that I'm saying no to Botox and fillers. It seems like everywhere I look, new anti-aging clinics are just popping up and here in the Netherlands, the number of clinics where you can get these procedures done has increased fivefold in the last 10 years alone. And it's very clear that Botox and fillers are getting more and more common. It's really not something that only celebrities do anymore. And when I go to the city center, I can see so many like normal, regular people getting these procedures done. It is becoming more like getting a haircut or getting your nails done. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not here to judge or shame anyone. That's not why I'm making this video. And we all have the choice to decide for ourselves what we want to do. But it has got me thinking, should I start getting Botox or fillers too? Because I am noticing that I'm starting to look a little bit older. Like, I don't look 20 anymore and the fine lines are really starting to come for me now and I'll be turning 40 in a few years so how to feel about that? <laughs> Let's talk about it. So when I mentioned on YouTube that I was thinking about making this video I got some comments from people saying that it is easy for me to talk about saying no to Botox and fillers because I'm still young looking myself. And while I do kind of get their point in a way, this is actually the age that many women start thinking about this and many people actually start way younger to get like get in there early and prevent wrinkles from coming in the first place. So this is exactly the age to think about this. As someone who's turning 36 soon, which means that I will be closer to being 50 than to being 20, <laughs> this has been on my mind and I am starting to see the first signs of aging. I know the camera doesn't really show it in this light, it kind of smooths things out, but I can clearly see it myself in the mirror. Some fine lines around my eyes, I have some lines in my forehead that really won't go truly away anymore. <laughs> and I guess my skin is just looking a little bit less like full and plump than it used to. Take this picture for instance. I mean, sure, I was making a bit of a weird face here and I was exhausted. This picture was taken early in the morning when we were waiting for the train back from London. But still, like my face didn't used to be able to do this. So when I saw this picture for the first time, I remember thinking, huh, okay. <laughs> wrinkles and my hands man that's where i can see it the most and <laughs> i'm sorry but this has me spooked a little bit i just want my hands to look like i'm 18 you know is that so much to ask all silliness aside we do live in a world where people seem to be obsessed with looking young as long as possible or at least looking young for your age young equals beautiful and aging and wrinkles don't it seems like something that everyone and especially women should try to avoid at all costs so we can get older, we just can't look older. And not only can we not look old, we also cannot look like we're getting a lot of things done. It should look completely effortless, like that no makeup look that actually involves a ton of makeup and skincare. Like this famous Dutch soccer player, Dirk Kuyt, he used to look like this and people would comment that he looks old. When he disappeared for a little while and came back looking like this, people would comment on how he got way too much done and now it looks unnatural. So you can get judged if you look your age, but also if you take measures to change it. And I'm not totally immune to this societal pressure to look young forever. It is the narrative that we all hear and see around us all the time from the moment that we were born. So seeing these changes in my hands and my face is confusing me a little bit. Like it's exciting on the one hand, but also kind of scary. Another thought that has come up in my mind is that, well, if everyone else is starting to do Botox and fillers and I'm not, then I'm going to relatively look older than everyone else because I'm not doing it. And I think this might actually be something that more women are thinking like, I don't necessarily want to start doing Botox and fillers, but if everyone else is, then I will start to look older in comparison and I will get left behind. So we might feel like we need to do it to keep up with the trend. 
When talking about this topic, there are a few things that I think are important to mention and to keep in mind. First, I'm not making this video to judge or shame anyone for their own personal choices. This is me sharing my experiences and my personal thoughts. So if you have done these things or if you want to do these things, then that is absolutely fine. It is your body, it's your face, it is absolutely your decision. So this is not me saying that Botox and fillers are bad or that you shouldn't get them. I'm just saying that it is not for me. And while I'm not making this video to try and change anyone's mind, I do just want to say that it is okay to choose not to do these things and it is okay to get wrinkles and look older as you get older and get gray hairs and just look your age. There's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing wrong with your face. Second, I'm talking about cosmetic use and not medical use of Botox, for example. So Botox can be used to treat a number of medical conditions, but I'm talking about like anti-aging or cosmetic purposes. Third, I'm not going to comment on whether or not I think it looks good on people because I feel like the reason that this is such a big thing is that we tend to really hyper focus on how people look, how we look, how others look. Apparently, a lot of people feel that it is okay to comment on that and tell people they look old or old for their age or that they look younger than someone else. Like, that's the world we live in. And I feel like if I was to sit here and be like, oh, she looks great or oh, look at this, like this doesn't look good, it would be the exact same behavior, just kind of the other way around. So I just don't think it's relevant to the conversation for me to mention if I think it looks good or not. I also don't really like the terms aging naturally or aging gracefully. I feel like it sounds kind of judgy to me and also like what even is natural? Injections are not, but skincare is. Or like what is graceful? If someone gets Botox, they can't be graceful anymore. Like that's kind of a minefield to me. I'm sure not everyone here knows exactly what Botox and fillers are and what they do. So they are injectables, they get injected into your skin with a needle. And Botox is often used to treat like fine lines and wrinkles by paralyzing the, or partially paralyzing, the muscles underneath. So because you can't move your face as much, you can prevent dynamic wrinkles from coming in. So for example, a frown like this, you wouldn't really be able to do with Botox. Then fillers are different because they are used to treat wrinkles that have already formed, like static wrinkles, or fill in parts of your face that lack volume. So static wrinkles are wrinkles that are there even without you moving your face. So for example, some people have the forehead lines when they're not moving their forehead, and I'm starting to see that in my own skin too. And they can use fillers to fill that up and make it like all smooth. You can also use fillers to create like a more sculpted jawline or plumper features. So with Botox and fillers, you can do a lot to change your face without getting invasive surgery. Now, I am not on TikTok or Instagram, so doing research for this video was pretty wild for me. <laughs> Apparently, we now live in a world where 10-year-olds are crashing Sephora with their mom's credit cards and they're buying retinol serums to prevent aging and teaching each other not to use their facial muscles so they won't get wrinkles. We also live in a world where you can now buy fake belly button stickers so you can hide your real belly button with a high rise jeans and then place a belly button sticker above that so it makes your legs look longer than they are. I think this obsession with looks and beauty and looking young and looking fit, it has been around for a long time, but social media just exacerbates that times a thousand. When I take the subway, I so often see young, beautiful girls making tons of photos, selfies of themselves, and then zooming in on the pictures, looking at them from all angles and close-ups, and it looks like they're really obsessing over how they look and using filters before they post something online. I read an article about how social media impacts body image and how the use of filters can lower self-esteem and lead to depression or even body dysmorphic disorder, and it was very interesting. One study of teen girls found that the more time they spend using social media, the more likely they were to experience body dissatisfaction and even depression. 
but teens aren't the only ones who can have these internal responses to what they see online. Everyone is prone to concerns about their appearance or having certain features they wish they could change, from typical concerns about wishing you could look a little different, all the way to the extreme end of body dysmorphic disorder. Even in the early 2010s, long before the evolution of today's filters, studies found that using social media led users to compare themselves and their bodies to other people. People are becoming progressively more image obsessed, and I think that the progression of social media algorithms drive some of that. It really is an unhealthy dynamic, especially for young people who are still developing their self-esteem. All right, now let's talk about why I've decided for myself that I won't get these procedures done. I have low-key thought about it for a bit now that I'm starting to see that I'm getting a bit older, but made a firm decision not to do it. The first reason is that I want to embrace aging from a place of gratitude and excitement and not from a place of fear and loss. So I like to live intentionally and make choices based on what I find important in life. And so I tend to ask myself questions about why I want to do or not do certain things. And I try to align with that. This is just the way that I'm used to doing things. And of course, I'm not perfect at this. Like sometimes I will do something or make a choice and end up regretting it later. Like that happens too, of course but I try. My reason for wanting to get Botox or fillers would be that I'm afraid to look old and I'm afraid to lose my youth and my beauty, so fear and loss. And that's really not something that I want to give attention to because what we give attention to will grow and that seed of insecurity and fear is not the kind of seed that I want to water and have grow in my garden, so to speak. If I approach aging from a place of being afraid to lose my youth, then my life is going to be very challenging from now on because guess what? We are going to age regardless and that's if we're lucky. And if I was to spend time and money and energy getting these injectables and obsessing over the aging that is going to happen either way, I would probably not even feel more confident, but more insecure. So instead, I really want to approach aging from a place of excitement and gratitude. So I'm so grateful that I've been able to reach the age of 35 and I really hope to be able to live a long and happy life. There are so many people who don't reach this age and they will give anything to. So I feel like aging is a gift to be celebrated. I love smiling and laughing and crying and showing emotions with my face. So it makes sense that, you know, if you live longer, then your face is going to show it. Like the famous quote from Confucius, a healthy man wants a thousand things, a sick man only wants one. I think if I was to get a life-threatening disease, I would stop worrying about my looks instantly and all I would want is to get better and to have more time to be able to spend with the people that I love. So the fact that this is now my reality, I have that kind of life, makes me want to be really grateful for it. And also there are so many things that I really like about aging. I find myself to be much more like emotionally stable. I know what I want and don't want. I know what I find important. I get taken more seriously when I need to get something done and so many other great things. So it's also just really exciting for me to enter into this new phase of my life now that, you know, I'm clearly not 20 anymore. Another reason is the fact that Botox and fillers can cause health problems and have possible risks of side effects. This stuff scares me to no end. Even though Botox and fillers are designed to be temporary, which is why you need to get them done every couple of months or so, there is now also evidence to suggest that it never really goes away and it can also start to pool in certain areas of the face or wander to places where it wasn't injected. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor, so please do your own research into the health risks of Botox and fillers if you are thinking about getting them done, please. There are also side effects that are rare, but they do happen where, for example, a filler is injected into an artery and it can uh, block blood flow causing skin necrosis, which means that your skin dies off. It can also cause blindness if it is done near your eyes. 
skin necrosis, I would not recommend looking up pictures. <laughs> Just trust me on this. For me personally, these are not risks that I'm willing to take. My health is one of the most important things in life to me and I really value that. And even if there is a small chance that something like this could happen, it would be enough to make me want to say no. Then there's a risk of infections or autoimmune reactions, just all kinds of scary things. And so even if I was to really, really want Botox and fillers, this would still probably be enough for me to want to say, nah. -uh. In my research, I came across something truly disturbing, and that is that people are now starting to do their own lip filler at home. So apparently you can just buy that stuff online and it might not even be like a clinically approved filler, or you can buy a pen that uses pressurized air to kind of shoot the filler into your lips. The risks are so much higher when you do it like this. There is a chance that you're using too much or that you're getting it where you don't want it. So if you are considering getting this stuff done, please go to a professional. There will still be risks, but at least you'll be in good hands. Uh, check their credentials and make sure that this person knows what they're doing. I don't like committing to something that might take a long time to go away, if ever. What if I change my mind? What if after a while I don't like the look of it anymore? It's the same with getting a tattoo. It scares me because it's permanent and I want to always be able to be flexible to change my mind about things without having to worry about something that I did that I can't ever undo. In my research for this video, I came across people saying that they regret getting these things done because they don't actually like how their face looks now, or they don't like that they can't move certain muscles like they used to, or that they can't smile with their eyes anymore, or getting lumpy lips from the filler. There are also people who say they would like to stop getting these things done, but if you continue to put filler into your face, then your skin kind of stretches to accommodate for that extra volume. So as soon as you stop getting the filler, it starts to sag. There's just no real way of knowing how you're going to like your face after you get this done. And you know, as the years go by and that really scares me. Let's also talk about the costs because another big reason for me is that I love living simply. And if you didn't know, Botox and filler are expensive and time consuming. I looked it up and if I was to get Botox in two areas of my face, so let's say a forehead and mouth area, one appointment would be around 300 to 350 euros and I would need to get it done every like three or four months. If I kept that up for 10 years, I would have spent between 9,000 and 14,000 euros on Botox. And there are so many other things <laughs> that I would rather do with that kind of money. And if I was to get lip filler too, then that would be an extra three to 4,000 euros after 10 years. Don't hold me to these prices, of course, do your own research, but regardless, these treatments are expensive to do and to keep up. Not to mention the time investment. This is definitely another big one for me. Frankly, uh, I get a haircut every four months. I get a dental cleaning every six months and a pedicure every two months. And that is enough for me. I really don't want to add any like recurring appointments to that. Like <laughs> my life is busy enough as it is. Another big reason I've decided to say no is that I really don't want to put so much emphasis on looks in general. As I'm getting older, I'm starting to find that looks are becoming less and less important to me, both in myself as well as in others. I'm just not focusing so much on it anymore now that I'm like no longer in my 20s. And when you think about it, it makes total sense that I don't look 20 anymore because I am a whole teenage person older than that. Like when I look at my life back when I was 20, so much has happened since then. Getting my degree, landing my first job, getting a few different jobs, uh, going traveling to Japan and Iceland and all these other places, uh, my mom getting really sick and almost dying, getting a promotion, getting completely burnt out, <laughs> starting YouTube, buying an apartment with my boyfriend, all of these things happened in the meantime. And even if sometimes it is very strange for me to realize that I'm about to turn 36 because I really don't feel 36, like I don't feel like 
I know what I'm doing or that I'm as adult as other adults are. <laughs> At the same time, I know that I've grown so much ever since I was 20 and you know it makes sense that my looks reflect that and having that life experience now to me is just a lot more important than looks it's also just nice when you get older i don't know if you recognize this so tell me please down below but i'm just not like looking in the mirror as much anymore or ever basically just when i'm uh like washing my face or doing my uh, makeup or brushing my teeth but otherwise i'm just i'm never looking in mirrors when I was younger, I used to look at myself in um, the windows of the stores walking by and worrying about whatever, <laughs> uh, like my shoes or my outfit or my hair or something. And now I just, I never really do that anymore. I just feel so much more secure, not because I feel like I look fabulous, but more so in the fact that I know who I am and I don't necessarily worry about my looks so much anymore. I like authentic faces. I love watching people's faces and how they're all different and unique and beautiful in their own way. And this is the face that I was born with. And while I do think like I have my insecurities, I'm not happy with everything about the way that I look, this is kind of the face that I wanna keep. <laughs> and when we all start to get the same procedures done because they are trendy, I do feel like everyone's faces are kind of starting to look more and more alike. And I'm not saying that I would never, ever, ever get anything done. Uh, Botox and fillers are a definite no for me. Um, but let's say that, you know, I can definitely see why someone would want maybe a little brow lift or, you know, how people sometimes get like saggy skin above their eyes and it makes them look tired even when they're not or it gives them headaches or something. Like I can see doing something about that. I'm a big scaredy cat. I would not do something like this easily, but if it really, really bothered me, like I'm not saying I'm against doing anything like this. Again, it is your decision and I'm... You know, I would be open to something if the situation was there. So I'm not saying I'm against it or that it's bad. It is really very nuanced and we all need to decide for ourselves where we want to draw the line and how we can live in alignment with what we find important in life. Let's talk about some things that I am willing to do. Now that I am getting a bit older, <laughs> I did decide to change up my skincare routine a little. Back when I was 20, I could basically just slap anything on there and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> so long as it was moisturizing, it was fine. And now that I'm 35, uh, I am just using a bit more like different products. So my morning and evening routines have become a bit more like elaborate and I'm also using higher quality products now. So that is something that I'm willing to do. I'm not going to spend hundreds of euros a month on skincare, not by any means, uh, but this is what I do find helpful. And I do actually have an entire video where I go in depth about everything that I do for my skincare, hair care, makeup, all of that, because I, I get a lot of questions. So I will leave that video in the description box plus right there if you're interested in learning more. And I am noticing a difference and it is probably something that mostly I can see, but it really does help me. I feel like my skin feels very like soft and hydrated now. And I do feel ever since I started using these, you know, better quality products that my skin is feeling a bit more like plump and um, firm and glowing. So that is something that I am willing to do. And then I believe that the healthy habits are where it's at, you know, um, making sure you're drinking enough water, wearing sunscreen, really, really big one, very important, eating the fruits and the veggies and the healthy fats, getting enough sleep, all of that good stuff. Just trying your best to take care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. What I think looks good and attractive in someone is confidence and gratitude and grace and smiling a lot and laughing without fear. When I was still working a corporate job, uh, sometimes I would come across women who were in their 50s or in their 60s and they were so beautiful, like they looked so good and I was really inspired by them. And they all had wrinkles and gray hair and they looked fabulous, they looked beautiful. And 
I remember thinking like they have stars in their eyes, you know, and they have such good posture and they carry themselves so well. And it made you feel like good and happy and optimistic and positive being around them. And that is what I aspire to. I don't have gray hairs yet, but when I do get them, I don't know if I want to dye my hair or not. I guess it depends on how it looks on me, but I at least want to try to not dye my hair for a while just to see like what it's like, because I do really like that look on others. And of course, if you do dye your hair, like that's absolutely fine too. We all make these choices for ourselves. Some words for people who are watching this and who are thinking about maybe getting Botox or uh, fillers or maybe feel bad about not being able to afford them or like are on the fence about it. First of all, please look up the health risks before you get something done and make sure that this is something that is acceptable to you. And also make sure you're going to someone who knows what they're doing, check their credentials, do your homework. This is not where you want to skip your research. It never hurts to do some reflection and think about why it is that you feel you want Botox or fillers. And if you feel insecure, you could do an experiment where you just get off social media for three months. And I know it's really not that easy, but um, at least that way you know when you still want it after three months that it is something that you want for yourself and not because you're being influenced by all of these people that the social media algorithms are feeding you that you're seeing like everyone getting it done when in reality it's really not everyone who gets these things done going off social media for a while might not fix everything but i am pretty sure that there's a good chance that you will at least feel a little bit better about yourself when you do also if someone is recommending these treatments to you and they are the one who stand to gain from that financially like they're the ones who you would have to pay to get it done, please take their advice with a grain of salt because there is incentive for them to tell you that you need this. I've heard from some people that um, they were told by someone that in their professional opinion, there's all kinds of things wrong with your face and they need fixing and this person looked absolutely fine. <laughs> so yeah, if someone stands to gain financially from you feeling insecure, then uh, please take their advice with a big grain of salt. Getting older and looking older doesn't mean that you lose value as a person or that your life is any less fun or valuable or important. And you are never going to be as young as you are now. So try to embrace your age when you can, because it is a gift. And even if your face shows all the things you've been through, the stress, the trauma, the heartache, the laughter, the sleepless nights and everything else, that's not a bad thing. It means that you are living life. I find it helps me to obsess less about my own looks if I also focus less on other people's looks. And also let's try to not comment on if we think people look old, because if we live in a world where 10 year olds are going to Sephora for anti-aging wrinkle stuff, there's something very, very wrong. <laughs> So let's also try to teach the younger generations that it is okay to age and it is okay to look how they look and they don't need to worry about that stuff so much. I would love to hear from you. Have you gotten something like this done? Do you maybe love it? And do you have like a lot of positive experiences with it? Are you thinking about getting it done? Like what's, What's your thoughts about this? I would love to read it down in the comments. If I missed something in this video or if you disagree with something, also feel free to let me know. During my research for this video, I came across three videos in particular that I found interesting. One was from Melanie Murphy, one from Salem Tovar and one from Advasion. So I will leave the links to these three videos in the description box in case you want to watch them as well, because they did help me to kind of put my thoughts in order a little bit more. And if you want to get more videos from me and also support the channel, then you can also check out Patreon. I post two extra videos a month over there. We have vlogs, uh, deep dives, life updates, tea time chats, and the income that I make from Patreon helps me to keep making videos here on YouTube, pay for business expenses and not overwork myself because it makes my income a bit more reliable. So you can join for $5 a month. And of course you can also cancel again anytime. And if you decide to join, then you will immediately get access to the over hundred videos that are already up there. 
It's patreon.com slash simplehappyzen. All the videos are ad free and come with a podcast version as well. So a really big thanks to everyone who is watching both here on YouTube and on Patreon. You're amazing. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you all again next week. Bye bye. If you want a six pack, but you don't want to have to go to the gym, then apparently you can buy one on Timu and wear it as a bodysuit. <laughs> you know, the world has opened up for me researching for this video.